Good morning, boys and girls. Are you ready for Bible time again? I sure am. Oh boy, we have got an exciting lesson today. A lesson how Jesus, well, he meets all of our needs, whatever they might be. And we're, you're going to love the Bible lesson that we have today. Before we do the, the Bible lesson, let's go ahead and sing Jesus Loves the Little Children, and then we'll do our Bible verses, okay? Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red, brown, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Oh, that was a good job singing with me. Now let's see if we can do our Bible verses. Ready? Matthew 22, 37, and 38. Let's sing it, and then we're going to say it. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Matthew 22, 37 and 38. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. Boys and girls, if we love God with all of our heart, that's our emotions, with all of our soul, and our soul is our thinking, our feeling, and our will, what we want, and with all of our mind, that's our intellect, that's our, our thinking, if we'll do that, boys and girls, then you know what? God will be so happy, and we're going to live right if we'll just simply Love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. You know, we love him. Why? Why? Because he first loved us, didn't he? That's right. Well, let's pray and ask the Lord to help you be good listeners today. Lord, thank you for our Bible lesson today. Lord, I'm so excited to tell the kids what we've learned, what we have to learn today. Help the boys and girls to listen. And Lord, help them to learn from your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, I told you it was an exciting lesson. And you know what? When I was studying for the lesson today, I found out that Jesus recorded this lesson in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, and in John, all four Gospels. Well, if the Lord repeated it four times, then he must really want us to learn this lesson, doesn't he? Oh, I'm sure that he does. Well, the Bible tells us, and we're going to look in John chapter uh, chapter number six. That's where we're going to be looking today. And it says that Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee. Now the Sea of Galilee was a great big sea. And on one side was mountains and on the other side of mountains. And a lot of times the wind would come down and it would blow on that on that sea because it was such a big, big sea. And and a lot of times the, the fishermen would be kind of even scared because of the wind. Well, Jesus went over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee and the Bible said a great multitude followed him. Well, why do you think a great multitude followed Jesus? Well, the Bible tells us right here in verse 2. It says that they followed him because they saw his miracles, which he had, had done. And so they followed him. They wanted to see more miracles. In sign language, you make an M and go up like this. Miracles. They wanted to see more of the miracles that Jesus did. Well, a great multitude followed Jesus. And if you look at my picture here, you're going to see. Can you see it? You're going to see the sea of Galilee. You're going to see the great multitude of people. And the Bible says Jesus sat down. He sat down and he taught the people. There are a lot of things that he wanted to teach them. Oh, yes. They followed him because they saw his miracles. But Jesus wanted to also tell them about his heavenly father. He had well, the Bible says that all day long he sat and he taught the people. And the Bible says a great multitude. Look at all the people that came on the side of the mountain and then down on the, the valley floor. There's a Sea of Galilee here. Look at the great multitude of people that followed him. Well, the Bible says that the disciples said to him, you better send the people away so that they can go find food to eat. Here's the picture. Here's the disciples. Oh Lord, you better, you better send the people away because it's the end of the Lord's nighttime and they're going to be hungry. They, they need to go. And the Lord said, well, you give them something to eat. See, the, the Lord wanted to test his disciples to see 
if they realized who he was and what he could do. And <laughs> they didn't. They didn't at all. Listen to what the Bible says. It says that the Lord asked them, Jesus, you, you give them to eat, to test them, to prove them or test them. And Philip, one of the disciples said, if we had 200 penny loaf, penny worth of food to eat, what is that amongst this great multitude? That's certainly not enough to eat. <laughs> no. And the Lord says, well, what do you have? And Andrew, one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said, well, there's a lad here. There's a little boy here, and he has five barley loaves, five little loaves, kind of what we would think of as a, a, a bun, a roll. But he had five of these and two little fishes, two small fishes. But well, what is that among so many people? He, he didn't understand. Andrew didn't understand what the Lord could do. And the Lord told the disciples, you go have the people sit down. Now, there was about 5,000 men plus women and children. Can you imagine? 5,000 men plus women and children. And he says, go ahead, have them sit down in groups of 50. Now, in numbers, next week, we're going to start. Well, we, actually, we started even this week. We started counting not just by tens, the fathers of the families. We started counting by fives. Well, can you imagine he hadn't set up? in groups of 50 all over the side of the mountain and in areas all along. Because you see, the Lord does things decently and in order. And that's how the Lord wants us to do things, boys and girls. You know, we have a, two rules in our classroom, don't we? One of them is don't talk without permission. And then the other one is don't get out of your seat without permission. Because if we were all talking at the same time, oh my goodness, that would just be a confusion, would it? wouldn't it? We, we wouldn't understand what everybody wanted. And so we raise our hand and wait till we're, wait, this is wait in sign language, wait till we're called on. And so that things are done decently and in order, because that's how God does things. God does things decently. And in order, so that's one of the lessons we can learn from this from this uh, story. But let's see what else, okay? Well, the Bible says that the lad came forward with his two little fishes, five loaves of bread. Here he is. Here's the lad. Here's the two his little ones. Maybe his mama before he left and came to do what Jesus had to do. Maybe his mama made him a lunch with two little fishes and. We were coming, we think of them as like sardines, maybe. They're just little small fishes and five little loaves of bread. And here he is. But you know what, boys and girls? That lad, that lad, lad means boy. That boy was willing to share with Jesus what he had. And so here he is. He gives it to the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus took it. You know what he did first? Can you tell? Can you, can you guess what it is? That's right. He bowed his head and he thanked the Lord for that food. He thanked his heavenly father for that food. You know, every time we have snack time in our class or lunchtime, oh boy, all the boys and girls, they want to pray. They'll raise their hand. Can I pray? Can I pray? Can I pray? They all want to pray and thank God for the food. And that is so wonderful. I hope that you'll do that at home too, because we should be thankful. So there's our second lesson. One, do things decently and order like God does. Two, be thankful for all that you have. God wants us to be thankful. And so Jesus gave thanks to his heavenly father for the food. And look, here's that boy. He's got his head bowed here for more food. He's praying for his heavenly father, thanking his heavenly father for the food, just like we should before we eat. And I hope that you do that at home. And I hope that you do that. We'll continue to want to do that at school, giving thanks for what we have. And the Bible says, after the Lord gave thanks, he started to break the bread into pieces and break the fish into pieces. And they filled up basket after basket after basket after basket. Look, here's the disciples. Here's the people all over sitting down. And here's the disciples with baskets. And they go out and they fill up baskets here. And they fed and fed and fed the people. And the Bible says they fed them. Well, let me read it right here to you. And let's see. The Bible says they fed them until they were full. They had enough to eat. Look at that. Can you imagine? 
two little fishes and five loaves of bread fed all those people, 5,000 men plus women and children. Let's see if we can sing a song about it. Will you help me? Two little fishes and five loaves of bread with this little bit of food. A multitude was fed. Who else but the Son of God could do this, people said, with two little fishes and five loaves of bread. Only the Lord Jesus could do that. And the Bible says that Jesus gave them a job to do. Those disciples had a job to do. After all the people were fed, Jesus said, gather up all the leftovers. Don't let it go to waste. Oh, my goodness. You know what? There's another lesson we could learn, isn't it? You know what? When Mommy... Or daddy, whoever it is that fix, fixes your snacks and fixes fix your lunch every single day, they give you what they want you to eat. And they they expect that you should eat it. Mm, but you know what? Mm, yeah, sometimes, sometimes in our classes, we see children throw away food that they should have ate. They just throw it away. But Jesus said, no, you gather up all the leftovers, that nothing should go to waste. God doesn't want us to waste our food. You know, at supper time, at home, don't take a great big plate full of food if you're not going to eat it. No, just take a little bit, eat it, and I'm sure mama will let you go back and get some more. But let's not waste. So think of the lessons we learned today. One, we learned to do things decently and in order, just like Jesus did. Two, we learn to give thanks for our food. We learn to give thanks for all that God gives us. And then three, we learned not to be wasteful, to gather up the fragments that were left over and not be a wasteful person. My, what good lessons we learned. But boys and girls, I thought of one more lesson, a lesson that the Bible tells us about in the book of Philippians. It says that my God, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in Jesus. God will supply everything we need when we put our faith and trust in him. Do you trust the Lord to give you what you need? We don't always get everything we want because God knows what's best for us, but God will give us everything we need when we put our faith and trust in him. Oh, boys and girls, what a wonderful lesson we had today. Let's bow our heads and give thanks for our lesson. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful lesson. Lord, help us to remember to do things decently and in order like you do, Lord. Help us, Lord, to always give thanks for all that we have. Oh, Lord, we have so much. Lord, help us to remember that we should not be wasteful you said, gather up the fragments that nothing is wasted. Help us not to be wasteful and help us to remember that you will supply everything we need according to your riches. Oh my, according to your riches in Christ Jesus, how wonderful that is. Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, that was such a good lesson, wasn't it? But one more thing that we come up wants to leave you with, boys and girls. Is this. You know, the best thing that our Lord Jesus has done for us was he died on the cross to pay for our sins. And the Bible says he was buried for one and three days he was in the tomb. And just like the Bible said he did, after three days he rose from the dead. And you know what, boys and girls, he wants us to put our faith and trust in him. To believe that Jesus did that, paid for our sins, so that one day we could go to his wonderful heaven with streets of gold and many mansions. Well, that's the best thing that the Lord has done for us, and I hope that you'll remember that. Well, boys and girls, thank you for listening so well, and we got one more lesson tomorrow before we come back to school on Monday. Bye-bye now.